Hi, my name is Anne Heine, and I own a company called College Made Clear, and I do what you do. I help students and families get through the college list development application essay process um, with less stress. And um, I put recently up on Facebook that I would be open to helping people understand my process. And so we did a live Zoom and um, this are, these are the slides that I showed during that and the conversation that we had. So I'm just gonna walk you through the slides. So one of the things that's important when you're thinking about um, process is just to understand um, that we're basically all doing the same thing. And one of the things I thought would be helpful before I showed you what I do is to talk a little bit about my practice to understand how the process supports it. So first of all, we're going to talk about how I structure my practice, then I'll talk about how I manage my workflow, and then I'll talk about the tools that help me do that. So first of all, my practice may or may not be similar to yours in that I am 100% hourly. I don't do packages. I um, customize my services based on the needs of the student and the family. And um, it's still though comprehensive in nature, which means I work from the very beginning of the relationship and my goal with a student and my commitment to a student is to the very end of the process. That's the ideal, doesn't always happen that way, but that is how I start out with families. And that's what I ask them to commit to me um, as well. Um, it's curriculum based and that means that I have created certain lessons that I believe get students prepared for the process. And that is the, um, the reason that I have the process that I do the, and they use the tools that I do. And basically what I like to do is to have the focus be on the student learning how to do this for themselves because I find that that gives the student the best amount of success. So I don't develop a college list for a student. It's rare that I do that. In fact, I most of the time just teach them how to build their own list with me as guide and guardrails along the process. Um, so that's a little bit different. So what's my workflow? My workflow before the application and execution stage. So I kind of think about the process as two pieces. One is getting the student to the point where they have a college list and are ready to work on applications and essays. And then the application and execution stage of the process where the student's actually working through the from the list getting the work done. So I break it up into those two pieces. Um, before the application execution stage, my meetings are one-on-one -on -one with students and the students um, really progress through lessons that I give them and assignments that are meant to prepare them to build their college list, understand what it is they need in a college and get through all the things that they need to get them prepared to work on applications and essays. So I consider that kind of a push process. I direct it, I tell them what's next. Um, I tell them when we're gonna be, um, when we need to meet next, they decide the meeting times and where, um, how the, the meeting will be scheduled. They set that, but I tell them we're gonna need 60 minutes for this and you need to be doing it in the next two weeks or the next month. So it's a push process. During the application phase, um, it's a poll process, which means we're only meeting in person to do brainstorming or for me to answer questions, maybe provide encouragement, talk a kid off the ledge, um, help them with something. And all the application and essay review is done purely by document sharing and communication by text. I have three family meetings during the process. Uh, the first one is the kickoff meeting with everyone in the family present. Um, the second one is the application strategy meeting, which is done once the college list is final and before the Common App opens on August 1st. And then the third one is a decision meeting with all parties together, if need be, to help a student make a final decision about where to go to college. And along the way, what I have found is it's important to have frequent parent touch points for input. I have a situation where my parents are hourly, right? My fees are hourly. So um, I on purpose have the family meeting in the middle, right? As we're about to go into the application and execution phase, because I wanna make sure parents understand the workload that's coming for the student and also the invoices that are gonna be coming because um, the amount of essays really drives the total amount of expenditure on a parent's part. And I want them to be prepared for that. So some of my process are really driven by the way that my work is structured. And so it's really important to understand that your work might be structured differently. So your goals might be different and therefore the tools that you use might also be different. 
I use really a number of tools, but the two that I rely on the most at this stage are College Planner Pro and Dubsado. And I will show you both of them. And I will also go through what I do with each of them and show you some of the screens. Um, but initially College Planner Pro, I've worked with it from the beginning. Um, I really love it. And the one thing that I find out about it is that I'm constantly learning that it can do things that I didn't realize it could do. And as my process changes, I sometimes use some of the functions in ways maybe that they weren't intended. Um, that's fine because it's uh, me customizing the process. Um, but I found that it's really flexible for a lot of things and uh, my students love it. And most importantly, parents are super impressed by it. Um, that on its own is probably worth the cost of having my students um, associated with it and have a, uh, a portal account with it. I use it for student communication. Um, the conversation function is essentially texting and my students love to text, so that's awesome. Um, I use it for meeting summaries uh, by email and I use that to copy the parents. It keeps them in the loop, but it keeps them at arm's length. And it also teaches students really that we're gonna start communicating by email, but um, it's mostly for the parents. Um, it gives students access to all the lessons that I want them to be doing in the process. It is a storage place for all their work, um, but it also is a storage place for their Google Docs. And I'll show you how that works if you're not familiar with it. Um, it also provides a place for me to store my notes about a student. Um, and since I'm hourly, it's critical that I do time tracking. So I use the time tracker feature in College Planner Pro, and I also use it for invoicing. On the Dubsado side, I use Dubsado for canned emails. This has been a lifesaver and a time saver for me. I know that you know you are sending the same email to parents over and over and over again. If it's not um, in the same year you're sending juniors the same thing this year that you're gonna send juniors next year. So my motto is write it once beautifully and then use it over and over again. Um, and you can tweak it. And so Dubsado allows for you to keep a place for emails that you send on a regular basis as part of the process and um, you don't have to use your brain power or your valuable time to reconstruct those emails. Um, I use it for my initial contact. I have a contact form on my website that gathers leads for me. I use it for contracts. I use it for communicating to parents about essay and application status and I use it for commonly um, covered topics like FAFSA, scholarships, all of that kind of thing. The second thing I love Dubsado for is its forms. Um, the forms are beautiful and I love to show parents um, a form or have them see a form from the very beginning of the relationship, which is just really gorgeous. Um, I think it just puts it off as a professional, uh, makes you look good, and it also gives you the information that you need to do your practice. So I use the forms for onboarding, for questionnaires for both students and parents, for college list input from parents. That's one of the touch points when I wanna to talk to, to parents. And then I also use it at the end of the relationship for testimonials and feedback. And I didn't figure all this out immediately. I started with one email and one form, and then I've just built it as I've communicated with parents and students as I go. One thing to know is um, Dubsado is a one-to-one -one communication tool. It is not a broadcast or newsletter uh, tool for emails. Um, you would need a different uh, form or a different company for that. So that's not what Dubsado does. They are really a client relationship management tool. Um, and it's very much more one-to-one. -one. Um, so you would think maybe there's some overlap between College Planner Pro and Dipsado, probably, um, but I like to use them for separate functions. So at this point, I'm gonna show you what I do with College Planner Pro. This is my fake student, Jeremy. And this is what my view looks like when I see Jeremy's account. And the couple of things I wanna highlight is I mentioned about the to-do list. So um, I have assignments that I take my students through. They are the same for every student for the most part. So I created a multi-student to-do, which means you create it in, the, um, in College Planner Pro outside an individual student, and then you can assign it to multiple students. So let's say if you wanted every student in your junior class to do a particular to-do, you would create it once, and then you would add each student to that particular to-do. And then it will show up in their account with a uh, to-do date, a complete by date. And this is how I know where my students are. I know what they've completed. And I can view this by things that have not been completed yet. 
so I only see what they have yet to do. It's pretty clear what's yet to be done. And that helps me manage what they're doing. Um, when Jeremy goes into an assignment, he can see the instructions. That's what this is here. Complete this assignment using the tools provided in files. And um, that allows him to have everything he needs in order to get the assignment done. Uh, for this assignment number one, he would go over to his general folder. Uh, here's assignment number one. I have uploaded it as a Google Doc. And one of the things I do in my practice is if I want a student to fill out the Google Doc and add their own things to it, not just read it and refer to it, I have them copy the Google Doc. So how do I do that? I've set the permissions on this Google Doc so that when a student clicks on it um, and we say, do you want to view it? Yes. It asks you automatically, would you like to make it a copy of assignment number one? That way they're not changing my original version of the document. They are making their own copy of it, which I find really helpful. So that is how I do my students' assignments. Um, I also keep my notes um, in a general folder here called Anne's folder. And in the same way that I've uh, linked a Google folder or a Google doc for Jeremy to do his assignment, I have created a Jeremy Google folder for my own notes. And um, I made it so that the student cannot view this file, but I've linked a Google doc. And so it sits out on my Google drive. And here it is, Jeremy Adams, his activities. So I like to have one list of all the activities that Jeremy's been doing. Um, and I keep notes on what he tells me about them. So later I can use those as prompts to help him fill out his Common App activities. I have my notes from my meetings with Jeremy. And then I've also uploaded other documents that I find helpful to have handy, like his transcript. And I keep track of his transcript because I wanna see um, if there's any course progression challenges in his transcript that might be things that we wanna highlight in the additional information section. So this is where I keep my notes for him. And um, you'll notice it's in my 2023 student notes folder, but I can just link to it straight from College Planner Pro, which is super handy. Then sometimes I want information like right at my fingertips about a student. And so what I've done is I've used this, this checklist function. Um, this isn't probably what the makers of College Planner Pro necessarily intended for this, but we use the tools the way they work best for us. And so this is meant to be kind of a to-do list for the consultant, but I like to use it as a repository for information about a student that I can have kind of at my fingertips. So I use use science with my students to do assessments. Um, and so for this particular student, I've summarized his use science results here. And um, it helps me just to take a look at them if I want to really quickly. I also have put his initial college criteria here as well. But if I want to give myself a to-do item, this is a great thing to do and use the checklists for. I have gone ahead and labeled it as a to-do so that I know and it stands out. And you can also change the order of these. So I always put my to-dos at the top of the list so I don't forget that they're there. College Planner Pro also has a a way for you to um, do reports to show what checklist items are outstanding and what to-do items are not yet completed or completed for a student. So the reporting functions are pretty good here. Um, so that is how I use um, College Planner Pro. That is at least the, uh, the basic overview of how it works for me. I'm gonna show you now um, my Dubsado. And so Dubsado, the dashboard is here. I've said it's, um, it's a one-to-one -one, uh, client relationship management tool. And clients are essentially projects in Dubsado. So for each client, you will create a new project and that's how I manage the process. But the two cool things about Dubsado are under here. So I mentioned both forms and canned emails. So let's start with canned emails. So what I have done is as I write brilliant writing, sometimes happens, I will capture it in a Dubsado canned email to use again and again. So I have labeled these starting with numbers so that I know where in the process um, each of these goes and I can kind of find it quickly. And so this is the first one that generally happens in a relationship where a um, someone will get on my Calendly calendar, and I do use Calendly for scheduling meetings, but they will get on my calendar for a free consultation for 30 minutes. And so when a, a parent does that, 
I go in here and I send them an email saying, thank you. This is what you can expect from our conversation. Um, I'll be calling you, whatever points have come up um, that confuse people. Um, and I also use it as a confirmation for them. So I send that out to them. Dubsado is set up so that you can do some automated workflows. Like if you wanted to, when someone sends you a form that says they're interested, you could automatically have them send an email back. I don't have it set up that way. I do it so that um, I am by hand sending these out to people. Um, but I have thought about doing the automated version. If you want to do the automated one, um, there's also a function where you can say you want to see it before it goes. I like to be more in control of the process and when things get sent out and I would feel uncomfortable having things sent out without me knowing about it. Um, even if it was something I had set up in advance, it's just my thing. So I don't have it set up that way, but it's a definitely an option. And I know a lot of people use it that way. So I have a lot of canned emails here. I've got, um, uh, after I've had a consultation with a parent, I want to follow up with a thank you note and, um, let them know that I understood what they were talking about. So I have the ability to customize that before I send it out. Um, I have an email that goes with the agreement. When I send my agreement out, I have a startup email that says, Hey, I got your contract. So at every point where there's an opportunity to have a conversation with parents, I want to lead them along the process and help them know what's going to come next. And I do that with these canned emails. And like I said, you write it once and it's super easy. There's a way to customize it. So then the, the project name or the student's name automatically pops up into the email. So it looks really custom. It's awesome. I'm, I'm a huge fan. Um, related to canned emails are forms. So forms are um, things that you can set up in advance um, that you can link to in an email to a parent or a student or a potential client um, that gather information. That's really their function. And so I have a lot of different forms I use. Um, I, when I first have a family that signs up with me, the first thing they get is a family information form. It's a quick way for us to kind of have something for me to email them quickly and I can use the information about the student to get started um, opening up the portal on College Planner Pro. So this is my family information form. It's the first form uh, a, a parent will get from me uh, after the contract. And it just asks all the same stuff that you would normally ask in an onboarding form. Nothing extra, nothing um, extraneous, but it's stuff that I would really like to know. And um, then when this comes back, I'm alerted. And then this information gets automatically populated into my relationship management database on Dubsado. So, and you also have this as a form, it comes to you as a form and then you can download it as a PDF if you want, if you wanted to keep it someplace else, but it stays within um, the client information, which I think is super handy. And so I have forms for all kinds of things. So I have forms where, um, Parents will, I have them help out with figuring out what the student wants in terms of college criteria. I ask them to input into the process. I have one for financial aid facts with a worksheet. Um, so at many different points along the way, I figured out where would, would a form be handy and be helpful to gather information from the client and or the student. So those are the two big ways that I, the two big tools that I use, um, the two ways that I use Dubsado, the canned emails and the forms and College Planner Pro for um, uh, the, the rest of the relationship. And so I encourage you to reach out to me if you have questions about either of these or my hourly process or how I work in any other way. I'd be happy to, to answer your questions. And um, I appreciate you uh, listening and I hope that you have found this helpful.